What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today with more Scrap Mechanic, and today we're back in creative mode. We're just going to do a little tutorial on some of the crane mechanisms I've been using in survival. I've been getting a lot of comments asking for just how to do some of these crane setups, mainly how I did the robot arm setup, as well as how I did the farmer crane setup that uses the double piston pulsing mechanism. So a few people have been able to figure it out, and it's awesome. I've been getting a lot of screenshots sent to me, but I've decided to actually sit down and do a proper step-by-step -step tutorial for anybody who's curious about how to do a double piston pulsing setup that allows you to control the length of these pistons with a couple of buttons, as well as to do some of the other rotating joints I use and some controller methods I use in other robot arms I've got in Scrap Mechanics Survival. So we're going to start off this tutorial with just how to set up a double pulsing piston and then I'm going to show you guys how I did my robot arm which is controlled only with controllers and moves up down left and right and of course combining that with the piston mechanism you can do pretty much whatever you want. So the first thing we're going to do is set up a double piston that we'll then use to pulse the system. So here's our piston setup. It's really simple, just a block attached to the ground here. This white block is attached to the ground and the rest of this will move out. Now our pistons, we basically want to set to the exact same distance and the exact same speed. They're going to be set to the slowest speed, which doesn't really matter. It'll just affect, you know, how far out you go with each button press. So in order to do the logic for this, we're going to do it rather bulky and kind of give ourselves lots of space, but we need three gates. One's an OR gate, one's a NOR gate, and one's an AND gate, and we have them in a loop like so, AND to OR, OR to NOR, NOR back to AND. And then we have two gates feeding off of this NOR gate here. Uh, one, I believe, is just an AND gate, and the other one is an XNOR, and we go like so. Now, if you notice, it's kind of hard to tell, but these two are actually alternating. They're not flashing at the same time, they're flashing opposite. And then, of course, we can put them to two AND gates. So we have one AND gate here, and one AND gate there, and they're connected in a line, and then these go to each of our two pistons. And you'll notice, if we've done this properly, the pistons are now pulsing back and forth, but this block on the end is not moving. It's actually stationary because the pistons are perfectly offset with their pulses. And if we change the speed on one of them, you'll notice this actually will move because the speeds are no longer the same. So that's why it's very important you keep your two pistons at the exact same speed, exact same distance as well. You can see it vibrates a little bit differently because this one's technically not moving as fast because the distance is different and, you know, it, it all works out. Just leave your two pistons exact same level, exact same everything. Now, the only thing we really have to do is hook up a couple of buttons to this circuit to actually make the whole thing work. So the first thing we're going to need is a switch that actually turns the pulsing on and off. So we'll connect our switch to all three AND gates. So it connects to this AND gate here first, which turns off the loop. But now you'll notice this one piston is fully extending because its gate is on. So then we connect this to this AND gate as well, and also to this AND gate as well. Now the whole thing we turn on, turn off, turn on, turn off. You don't technically need the switch on this AND gate really because that one's off when the circuit is off but you can just connect it anyway it's not going to hurt anything and uh, it just makes it sort of consistent so that's the on off switch for the entire circuit and then we need a button to extend and a button to retract so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this AND gate here and we're going to switch it to an OR gate because we need a button connected to that and one button we connect to the OR gate here for this piston and you'll notice if we hold this it extends that one and leaves the light permanently on and the other button, we connect to the OR gate here in the loop. And now if we hold this button, you'll notice it holds both signals on fully, which extends our pistons all the way out. When we let go, it goes back to pulsing. And when we hold it, they're both extended all the way out. The other button for retraction, we connect to the XNOR. And we also connect it to the NOR gate here in the loop. And now if we hold this button, you'll see it shuts off both of the gates and the whole piston retracts to whatever position we let go at. So if the circuit is on, we can press one button and extend out. When we let go of that button, it'll stop wherever we want it to stop. And we press the other button and it'll retract. And when we let go, it stops wherever we want it to stop. So this is really your basic double piston circuit. And it's really, really convenient for doing things like cranes and robot arms and scrap mechanic. If you want to do it longer than two, there are a few ways to do that. It gets a little bit more complicated. You can obviously do four pistons and do the same thing with another two in a pair. And then you have four that pulse. So you'd have two spots that pulse, but the end piece moves out. You could do it with three, but that gets just incredibly more complicated and you have to include a bunch more logic and you know you have to basically hand off which piston is pulsing but this is a great arm that gives you a full two piston extension so we can go all the way out you can see to that distance and we can retract ourselves 
all the way back to zero and any point in between. This is super, super useful, like I said, for cranes and robot arms. And then, of course, when you're done, you turn off the switch and the whole thing stops pulsing. Now, of course, if you have this thing out at some position here and you turn off the switch, it will retract all the way back to zero. So this is a really, really useful piston mechanism. I hope you guys find it useful. And, uh, of course, the circuitry isn't really that bad. It's a little bit complicated, but overall, if you follow along, it's actually pretty easy to do and uh, it works quite well. Just seven logic gates, a few buttons and switches, and it's very easy to set up and use in a survival world without spending too many resources, except for, of course, all the component kits you need for those pistons. Now, the final thing I wanted to show you guys is just how I do the robot arm in Scrap Mechanic. I know a lot of people were asking me how I made a robot arm with controllers that doesn't actually use any engines and can move around with controllers, and it's really, really simple. We've got some pistons on it as well, but the controller mechanisms we use on that are for up, down, and left left and right and the setup is actually really really easy we put a bearing and then a pipe piece and then another bearing on top of that and we rotate it and then we put a bearing and this is our swivel joint right so this is let's say you know it's our up and down joint right there and the other two are our left and right and then to wire up these controllers is actually a lot easier than you would think so one controller connects into each of the different positions right the two that are rotating have to be in opposite directions and the one that's tipping you know it can be in one or the other and each of these three controllers, we set to the exact same setup. So we go two degrees, and to do that, you just hold shift and then, you know, drag your mouse. It gives you individual degree increments. If you do it without holding shift, it does it in 15 degree increments. But we hold shift, let's put these to five, and we put them on a loop. You have to make sure the loop icon is lit up. That's very, very important. And we do that for all three of them. So five degrees, loop done and then of course we have our seat now our seat just wires up directly into the up down pitch controller so you'll notice that controller hooked straight into the seat and this actually converts your w and s to work that controller mechanism so you'll see when we hold w now it's moving it up and when we let go it stops and it'll stop at the closest five degree interval because that's what we have this controller set to if you want it to go at like the closest 30 45 degree whatever you want you set it to that and you'll hold the button and it'll stop at the closest interval and then of course if we hold s you'll notice it goes back down and again stops at the closest five degree interval so this is exactly how my robot arm pitches up and down and of course controllers in survival don't use power so that's super super convenient now to do the left right rotation uh, we kind of need to use the steering on this, right? So we need a bearing down and we hook our steering into this bearing. And on top of this bearing, we put any block we want. I'm just going to use concrete for this. On my robot arm, I believe I use a couple of pipe pieces. And now you'll notice if we rotate left, it moves left. and we rotate right, it moves right and back and forth. And then, of course, we just put a couple of sensors directly in front of this. Set these to a range of one. Make sure they're on button mode, no sound, no color. And we put one of these into each of the two controllers. So if we rotate left, you'll see, oh, the robot arm moves to the right. But that's okay. We can just flip this bearing. Done. So now if we rotate left, you'll see the robot arm moves to the left. We rotate right. The robot arm moves to the right. We press W. It moves up. And we press S. It moves down. And then, of course, let's just wire this whole thing up. So let's actually take this piston mechanism here. Let's put it on the end of the robot arm as well. Just so we can get the full effect of this whole thing. Robot arm like so. Perfect. And then, of course, we'll connect these up just like this. And we'll connect the switch up and the two buttons to the seat. And there we go. Now we've got a fully functional robot arm. So we can rotate left. We can aim up. We can rotate right. We can press 1 to turn on that pulsing mechanism. Hold 2. Oh, I've got to reset these pistons. That's right. Let's. There we go. 15. 15. Perfect. So hold 2. It'll extend the robot arm out. And it'll stop wherever we let go and hold three and it'll retract the whole robot arm in and stop wherever we go. And this whole system right here won't use any fuel of any kind in survival. There's no batteries required. There's no electric engines required. There's no gas required, of course, unless you're putting some sort of a drill bit on the end. But none of these controllers or logic blocks or anything use any power and it's super awesome to make really, really easy robot arms and scrap mechanic. Of course, if you want the rotation joints and the up-down joint to go faster, you could replace these three controllers with electric engines. It's literally the exact same setup. You just put an electric engine in each of these places. But then, of course, you are consuming batteries 
to make this whole thing work. But either way, I hope this helps you guys who are trying to build your own robot arms and scrap mechanic. This is how I do my robot arms currently in survival. I believe the one actually on the back that for picking up farmers uses an electric engine and doesn't use controllers. But either way, you could do it with controllers. You'd get pretty much the exact same arm. And of course, this method doesn't use any power. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If you have other tutorials you want to see for some of the scrap mechanic survival stuff I've built, let me know. This one was asked about a lot and I know it doesn't show you specifically how I built the exact dimensions of my robot arm but these are the exact same control methods I use and hopefully that allows you guys to take that and build your own sort of robot arm in scrap mechanic but let me know what you guys think in the comments down below and while you're at it hit that like button hit that subscribe button and as always I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see y'all next time